on his hind legs and ran away. That took my breath, a sense of daze and fear came over me, I stood motionless for maybe 5 or 10 minutes, could not move, then I came to my senses a little and quietly went inside. In my head for some reason I thought that if I told someone about this, it would come for me, so I have told no one, and no one would believe it anyways. This occurred at about 2 in the morning. I remembered a bedtime story. I lived in a remote Yaku village that had its own old school, it was something like 100 years old, wooden, with outdoor facilities. The wood was blackened from dampness and old age, the roof was covered with mold, the floor looked flat and the walls were straight. People were killed during the revolution, people lived and starved there during World War II, unsurprisingly there were rumors about that school. In any case, the atmosphere in the building was always gloomy, little light, the windows big and dusty, and the quarters cramped. Often even the adults acted as if there was an evil spirit there, at night someone's footsteps or as if someone was running around. Anyway, when I was a student, there were a lot of stories like, the hung pioneer, flying hats, the man with chains, and the headless man. But this story happened to me and I can say with 100% certainty that I was not under the influence of substances or alcohol. When the story took place, I was around 13 years old or so. At that age I was still immature and innocent, so at 13 I was just a kid with childish and pure thoughts. My uncle worked at the school, a feminine faggoty man, but he had a wife and kids. But his queerness doesn't play a role in the story, just remembering everything down to the smallest detail. My uncle worked as a security guard and often his youngest son, a trained and stupid monkey, would come on shift with his father to spend the night. He must have been 11 years old. On one of my uncle's shifts, I went with them to that school, just before the shift he and his son stopped by to get something to eat. It must have been the early 2000s and there wasn't much to eat in the remote Yakut villages. In all, the school was big with two floors. It was already about 8 pm by the time we had arrived and the winders in Yakutia are black, dark, and all consumingly scary. My uncle went off somewhere, I think, to have a chat with some women who scrubbed the floors. We stayed in the room at the farthest end of the school and played, I don't remember what. But we had as much fun as we could. But then we got wary, it was very, very quiet in a special way. As if no one was in the building. All you could hear was the slight buzzing of a fluorescent lamp. And in that silence, somewhere in the distance you could hear the sound of an empty bucket rolling across the tiled floor. Well, at 9pm there could still be cleaning ladies, so we did not get too scared and continued to play. At one point we had to go to the bathroom. Even though we had to go outside to pee, there was one working toilet in the building, which worked intermittently and was locked. It smelled like shit and other disgusting things all the time, so it was rarely used. I took the key, found an old gas mask in a pile of junk, put it on and opened the door to the corridor. It was very dark in the corridor, I began to go out and suddenly in the farthest corner I saw a man. He was standing with his back to me, when the door opened, the bright light cut off a piece of darkness and faintly illuminated the opposite wall. I got a better look at the man, he was wearing a black robe, his hands behind his back, his head tilted forward. At first, I wasn't frightened, he looked like an ordinary man. It was strange that he was standing in complete darkness though, I thought. He then turned around, I distinctly remember that it was a young Yakut guy. His face was ordinary, without anger and expressed nothing at all. He looked at me blankly. He didn't move, he just stood there and watched. I shat bloody bricks for some reason and ran back into the safety of the security room. My cousin and I hid behind the table and lay there, not moving, until my uncle came. We told him about what happened and he said that maybe we imagined it or the janitor was coming in through the window, drunk. We went to check the janitor room, the office was closed, we went inside, the windows were closed. Nobody could get out through the window and close it from outside. Anyway, my uncle brushed everything off, and I stayed up the whole night. It was creepy. Besides, my cousin was following me and didn't see that man, since I was the first one out and he was directly behind me in the room. At that time, there was no one in the school except me, my uncle, and the two cleaning ladies. I don't know what kind of Yakut Kun was standing there. Back in the days before the Soviet Union, the Yakuts lived in the laces, lost in the impenetrable taiga. Usually, families and close relatives settled in the middle of the field. They built two tents, one for winter, and a yurt a little further away for summer. Such many villages were called Agda Yuisa, if to translate roughly, it means, paternal kinship, 
or something in that spirit. Sometime in the 1920s two Yakut families, distant relatives, lived in one lands, lost among the impenetrable forests. It was the end of summer, and almost August. The adults went out every day to cut hay, leaving two adolescent boys at home to watch the calves and meet them for tea in the evening. Basically, the boys played in the abandoned barn all day, looking after the calves from time to time. The adults, before leaving, usually punished them not to go beyond the fence in the direction of the ancient graves. By the way, in Yakutu as almost everywhere you can come across Chiang Yuosa, old, decayed graves in the form of small, cobblestone houses, which probably stand for several centuries on elevations. One fine morning, the parents went out to the hayfield again, and the boys were left to play in the abandoned bar. There were no toys in those days, and the children played with all sorts of plants, wood, stones and other gifts of nature. In the morning, when they came to their usual playground, the boys found that the bulbs of iris, which were the farm animals for their games, had wilted. The children decided to pluck fresh bulbs, but it turned out that everything near the barn had already been plucked, and not far beyond the fence the irises were growing vigorously and inviting. Spitting on their parents' taboo, the boys went out to pick iris seeds and look around. After picking enough of the necessary ones, the children decided to go back but, one of the boys found lingonberries next to a bum. Forgetting their games, they began to pick unripe lingonberries and greedily ate them. Having tasted the berries, they wanted more and they decided to go a little farther in the direction of the graves, the sun was already starting to set. They were walking slowly, talking about this and that, and suddenly, in the middle of a sentence, one of the boys became abruptly silent, and then heard a piercing scream. He looked around and saw his friend standing with his head up, shrieking in horror. The boy looked where his friend was looking and saw a long black man as tall as a decent sized tree, eyes the size of fists, the man took a step towards him, and the boys ran back home. The one who first saw him was stockier and stronger than his friend and therefore ran faster, the other shouting for him to wait up. He could hear the Abasi chasing just a few yards behind him. The first boy stumbled and fell, and the smaller one ran as fast as he could home and heard his friend calling and screaming as if he was being cut. When the boy ran home, he fainted and only woke up when his parents arrived, they didn't notice anything and scolded him for not boiling water. The next morning the boy went out again to play in his usual place, but his friend was not there. He went to his house, his parents were home and said his friend had been very sick since last night. By lunchtime that boy had passed away. Here is another legend from Miyakutia. Not even really a legend, when I was 13 years old, it went around our village as a rumor that happened to people from our village, with specific names and locations. So, fuck knows. One family mowed one haystack over the summer in a glade alas near a village called Serduk. Yakut for hilly. And one day the man and his brother went to that alas with a tractor to take the haystacks to their place. They loaded everything on the trailer, and in the evening they went home. It did not appear as if they broke any taboo or caused any problems connected with religion and customs, but as usual, the Abaza can scare people. It was rumored that at dusk they reached the hillside at the exit of the Alas, and then the tractor stopped. It wasn't that it had broken down or stalled, it just wouldn't move on, stood still. The men scratched their heads, pressed the gas, the engine roared, no effect. The younger brother decided to get out to see what could be wrong, but not a couple of seconds later, he flew back into the tractor cabin pale as death. When asked by the older brother, he babbled that there was something huge sitting on top of the haystack loaded on the trailer. The older man couldn't believe it and looked out himself, indeed, there was a man of huge size, looking like a black silhouette in the evening twilight. He had his back straight, his legs spread, his hands resting on the hay. A disgusting smell immediately crept into the cabin, a canonical sign of the presence of a bossy. Naturally, the older brother immediately realized that the guest in the hay was not fucking human, he did not dare to call him. They did not move. All in all, they sat like that for about half an hour. Both of them were scared shitless, from time to time they pressed the gas, but the tractor was standing, the stench in the cabin made their eyes water. The sun was setting, the autumn darkness was gradually gathering around and the black giant was still sitting on the trailer, fun. The men had already begun to think about getting out of the tractor and walking leisurely to Sertic on foot, one mustn't run, he would chase you, when suddenly the noise of the tractor engine changed. Younger guessed to try to move the juggernaut, and it quietly drove forward. Brothers looked back, nobody in the hay. They exhaled in relief and hurried home, where they told everyone everything. Also, 
Those who had been in the Alas the next day said that the wheels of the trailer had sunk into the ground by about 15 centimeters, as if the creature sitting on it weighed dozens of tons. It was in the 1970s in the Tadiolis. It all started when our distant relative Seraphim came to our house in Yaikuyel. After drinking tea, he said he wanted to go home to Walba, but since there weren't many cars at the time, there were no private ones at all, he asked us for a bicycle. In those days almost everyone rode a bike, old and young, men and women, almost like in China. We had two bikes and his parents lent him the Ural. Walba is 33 kilometers north of Yaikuyel. There was no federal highway then, although the main route now remains the old one, but the entrance to Walba was different. He turned a little earlier, and the road went through two fields, the first is called, Yen, Herla. The road entered the field from the east side, went down, went under the hills, north side, and left from the west side with a rise past a small cemetery and through a woodland, then went down into another field. If anyone has read about Yakut Deponami by Gorath, there is a picture of such a field. There is a grave on each mound, so to speak, each has its own mound. Seraphim drove into this field in the evening, just as the sun was setting. He passed under the hills, got up to leave the field and saw, on one of the graves with his back to him, a woman was sitting and combing her hair. Seraphim was surprised, thinking what kind of a crazy woman had found such a place to sit. Going uphill, he stopped and looked to see who she was. When he stopped and turned around, the sun was just shining on the woman. It was a young woman, her name was Christina, who had hanged herself not long ago and was buried here. Seraphim could not remember how he got home, which was about 3 kilometers away. He came home, completely sick at heart. Christina started showing up everywhere after that. I remember Walba was under siege that summer. People were afraid to go out in the evening. Constantly, a little tornado would come from the side of the field where she was buried and disappeared by the house where she lived. After her death, one grandfather lived there. He, a poor man, was driven out every night by Christine, the grandfather could not stand it and moved out. That summer my grandmother and I came to Walba, and she would not let us go outside to play after dinner. I remember being told that Christina was met by her own best friend when she was out gathering cows. After that meeting, the friend was hospitalized for a long time. And most interestingly, she was seen by Russian chauffeurs bringing cargo to Walba, sitting on the grave and combing her hair. They said that they asked the locals, what kind of crazy person is sitting on your grave and combing her hair? I remember my grandmother grumbling that someone who had died a bad death was buried in the common cemetery, and as if she had been buried normally. That is, on her back, without an earthen pot on her head, or face down. They even nailed a star with flags on the grave post. Then winter came. In April of the next year Seraphim's father Durendi, an old communist, bought several kilos of salt and sprinkled it all over the grave so that the salt would be absorbed by the melted snow. No one has seen her since. So that's the story. And that bike came back and was with us until the 1980s. An unusual, mystical event took place on June 27, 2012, in the village of Sodensi in the Ust Aldenolis. During a thunderstorm, Mini whirlwind swept through the area and locals saw the silhouettes of 20 riders with ancient weapons, both carrying them and stuck in them. The same thing happened the next day, but that time there were only three riders. Sasha and Yakuts, an eyewitness. My friend and I, as usual, were walking around the village. At first, I didn't notice that the sky was covered with thick dark clouds. A strong wind came up and began to chase the dust. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a whirlwind approaching, inside which were some dark figures. My friend and I looked closely and realized that these figures had the outlines of people on horses. There were